Fruit flies. Ah! Not that. Fruit flies. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Fruit flies are a lot like people. I don't mean that they're just as annoying. I mean genetically. Did you know that these little flies are a well-established model for medical research, especially studying neurological disorders like Alzheimer's, Huntington's, and Parkinson's? In fact, the fruit fly is frequently used as test subjects for new medications and treatments for these conditions. That's all well and good, but have you ever tried raising a population of fruit flies? It's extremely time-consuming. In fact, researchers spend about 20% of their time maintaining fruit fly populations, which involves an abundance of care. For example, somebody's got to feed the fruit flies. Ah, just one more factor for this equation and world hunger will be eradicated forever! Is it? Aha! I found it! Yeah. Time to feed the flies, Andy. Again? Give me five minutes. They don't have five minutes. They need to be fed now. All right. Now don't you go away. Goodbye. The fruit fly also needs to change vials, therefore be sedated. Medication, medication time. However, the effects of such sedation on research reliability are not yet totally understood. <laughs> Coming up, I'll share with you an incredible breakthrough in control automation that squashes this problem. Hey, it's just an expression. But first is our premier product highlight sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Phoenix Contact Radio Line Wireless I.O. communication modules provide an efficient wire replacement solution for simple I.O. and serial communication. With a software-free radio setup, these modules enable straightforward I.O. to I.O. communication without programming. That makes this invaluable module ideal for situations where wiring is impractical or expensive. Advanced features like high-speed serial communication, network topologies up to 250 nodes, diagnostics, and 128-bit AES encryption are accessible via free software. Available in 2.4 GHz and 900 MHz variants, Radio Line supports distances from a few hundred feet to several miles. The Phoenix Contact Radio Line platform excels in reliability and is perfect for various industrial applications. Check them out today at mauser.com. Incredible technological breakthroughs are made possible largely by a curious mind and education. In this spirit, we bring you David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. For some simple variable frequency applications, we don't need network control that determines the speed of the motor. But we do want to have a little bit better control than just on and off. So in those cases, we often turn to the potentiometer, this variable resistance device that's built right onto the front of the VFD. Very convenient for adjusting the speed. The problem is sometimes these things are closed inside of a control cabinet and without opening up the cabinet and giving somebody access to the front of the VFD, controlling that speed might be difficult for fine tuning. So instead, we can use the analog input and change a parameter that says to look at the analog input to get your speed command reference, not to look at the network port and not to look at the preset potentiometer that's built right into the front. But let's explain a little bit more about these potentiometers and what that means. There's three different wires in a potentiometer. In these cases, we're given a supply for voltage, which in most cases is 10 volts. We're also given a common, which is the zero volt reference. And we're also given this third wire, which in this one is labeled AI or analog in. Now, when we connect to the potentiometer, the 10 volts goes to one side of this big disk of variable resistance. I have that simulated here as four resistors in series with each other. Now, that's not exactly a true potentiometer, but as the resistance changes and the voltage travel and the current travels through those resistors, we'll simulate the idea of adjusting a potentiometer to give you a little bit better idea of what's happening. The input signal, or that variable voltage, goes into the analog input. So if I press start, right now there's no voltage on the wire, so the motor isn't traveling. If I touch the 10 volt location, 
the motor adjusts immediately to 60 hertz. If I step through the first resistor, now here I have four in series, so we're going from 60 hertz, the full 10 volts, down to zero volts in four individual steps. I touch the first location, and I see that the, the speed settles right around 48 hertz. Moving to the next location, the, the speed settles right around 32 hertz. In my next to last location, the speed settles right around 16 hertz. And then finally, when I touch the zero volt common wire, as I expect, I'm down to zero volts. In a real potentiometer, as you adjust the knob, you're changing through those positions, but you're not changing it in four steps. You're changing it in a true analog, which means a thousand, 10,000, a million individual positions that can be achieved as you adjust the potentiometer. So they're great devices for precise control, but this simple demonstration gives you the explanation of how it adjusts its resistance as you change the sweep of that potentiometer. Andy, back to you. Thank you, David. Did you know that 60% of fruit fly genes are identical to those of humans? In fact, nearly 75% of genes associated with human diseases are also found in fruit flies, making them invaluable for research. However, as previously illustrated, maintaining fruit fly populations is time consuming. And that's where ABB steps in. ABB's Yumi Cobot is uniquely utilized in biomedical research to transfer fruit flies between vials. With its two independent multi-axis arms, Yumi ensures proper vial alignment, preventing fly escapes, and can perform this task 20,000 times monthly. The robot also uses a built-in barcode reader to manage vial contents, streamlining the process. By automating this repetitive task, Yumi saves invaluable research time and resources, reducing the need for CO2 sedation and minimizing fruit fly escape. And that will make for more healthy humans. Hey, that does it for us. For all the latest in control automation, be sure to check out our other videos. Stay healthy and we'll see you next time.